In this video, I'd like to go over the animation options in the preset menu. Uh, currently, there are four different preset type animations. You have dual attach, projectile to template, teleportation, and thunder wave. In previous versions of automated animations, there were more options here, but they've become redundant and were removed because they can all be set up through the on token menu. Uh, first, we'll start by showing you the teleportation options. You see here I have it set up to act as the Misty Step animation. All three animation sections are optional, so you don't have to even use any if you didn't want to. You could just use it to teleport or move a token around when you use an item. In the movement options, you'll see nine options. The first row is telling us how the movement should be. Uh, circular or square movement. And what that means is let's compare this to 5e. If it was a square we would be, let me pull up the module settings, here we go. 5e has two different forms of movement. You have on a square grid alternating and equidistant. Equidistant being 555 five, five, means every square you move is 5 feet. Alternating changes that to where it's 5 foot, 10 foot, 5 foot. And it just kind of changes the way that uh, you're going to be able to move with this range check. So here I'll have it set to a circular marker to match that the alternating movement pattern. GMs can choose to hide this uh, from players. Uh, this is best set on an on item animation if you want to hide teleportation templates from your players. And you can set the range uh, and distance that you want this to set off as. I have this set up to go for a range of 30 feet. Here you can tell it to when you move the token whether it wants to teleport it or move it. Now if you have it unchecked it's going to ask for a speed movement. But we'll go into that in just a moment. Uh, several options here. You can delay, set a delay for once you activate everything before the set the delay for when the token starts to move. Here I have it set to wait one second before it actually moves the token. Token alpha, when you start everything, you can tell it uh, to either stay at full opacity, you know, fade out of existence, and you can set delays on when it fades out and when it comes back in. So the way I have everything set up here, we'll use Misty Step, and you see the circular outline show. And then when we click on the game canvas, within this circle, if we click outside, you'll see an error pop up. But when you click in within range, it's going to play the animation, move the token, and pop out. So you'll see here, I could set the timing up a little bit better. I could delay when that token returns to full opacity, add some time to that, and kind of set it up just like you want it to. I could be way off on that timing. Let's see. And that was almost too much, but neither here nor there. If you want to move the token rather than the teleporting it, and I'll leave the opacity at 1 to show you this effect, you'll see the token kind of zoom across the screen. He must have went really fast there. Oh, I had <laughs> I just increased the speed. Awesome. So it'll actually move the token versus teleporting it. This is good for different effects if you want to maybe mimic uh, mimic a dashing movement. So you can actually also sit here and play. Let's just change this up. We're going to a uh, generic boulder impact when he takes off. I want chain lightning to play. And at the end we're going to have a little bit of a static electricity. And we'll have that play below the token. Eh, set the first one below the token as well. You see, just changing those, what happens... I'm going to set my speed to... 30. Going to need some more tinkering, but you'll, you'll get the, the gist of it. See, I'm delaying movement there. And you can adjust everything and really play around with it and fine-tune it to get it just like you want. On the ranged animation, which we call the between animation, you even increase the playback rate. I'll change this to 3 to show you the difference. 
so it's going to speed up that animation. So if I wanted to make it really zoom across the board, you can increase that playback speed, take away all the movement, uh, increase the speed that it moves, and really get a good dashing effect. Now for Fireball, you'll see here there are several options. There's a a what we have a, is a projectile and a primary explosion animation. These are the only two that are necessary. So say when we cast Fireball, it's going to shoot a ranged animation to the center of this template, and then it's going to play that explosion animation on the template itself. Now you can tell it to remove the template just like normal template animations when you fire this to get a cleaner effect on the canvas. You can set a pre-explosion effect to kind of have a have like a small detonation leading into the large explosion if you wish to. And just like template animations, you also have the secondary and target animations. Uh so let's say if you had for instance I'm going to move these poor bastards out here to get targeted by this fireball and I want a secondary animation kind of showing here it's going to explode on the tokens set the elevation a little bit higher than the explosion and we'll have to set timings and everything for this of course but what you'll see with MIDI quality of life active and 5e it's automatically targeting those so when I play this it's gonna fire the animation do the explosion and then set off the chain reaction to the target animations with fireball preset in particular you can also kind of choose an after image video and tell it to be persistent or not if you want some of the neat ground crack jb2 animations you can use those to be left on the canvas uh, moving on to the next one, we'll have the dual attach animation. I have this set up for Witch Bolt right now. And what I'll show you here is what dual attach does is it's a persistent animation that attaches it to the source token and the target. So we have here set to... Nope, let's change this. I want to use the actual Witch Bolt animation. So when we cast this Witch Bolt, You'll see the animation it was supposed to start up why did it not something happened here I might have to troubleshoot that one that should be sticking and following to those but it's not playing persistently we'll come back to that one the thunder wave animation uh, specifically for 5e and really only for the thunder wave animation jb2a has three different animations so when you sit there and you place this canvas or place this template on the game canvas uh, let's remove the template and you see what this does is depending on the relative location of the token to the template is going to play a different animation nice little neat effect for the thunder wave animation so that will be it for the presets sorry the dual attach is a little broken right now I'll have that fixed before release um, but again this is a good animation to use to attach effects directly to two tokens so ideally it would be following both tokens around as you move thank you